Hey everybody, welcome to Mortgage Today for Thursday, July 20th, 2023, and oh, what a day it was. MBS were down 45 big basis points real early this morning. Stocks lost 13.3 points at the bell as well. Real lose-lose there. Bonds were already several basis points into negative territory to start today, the but they're adding to the losses after the lower jobless claims number. This particular instance of claims is the one that lines up with the same survey week that they used for non-farm payrolls. Jobless claims came in at 228,000 on a 242,000 forecast. It was 237 previously. As much as they're missing on these forecasts, we got to start questioning the forecasting ability of these people. I mean, really. The Philly Fed came in at negative 13.5 on a negative 10 forecast. It was negative 13.7 previously. Bonds continued selling in fits and starts as investors fleeing both sides of the market. Stocks were lower as well. 10-year yields were up almost 10 basis points very early this morning. Existing home sales fell 3.3% in June, according to NAR. The market could easily absorb a doubling, doubling of inventory. Home sales fell but home sales prices held firm in most parts of the country, yet permits and starts are down, as is builder sentiment, which is lame, because we could easily handle twice as many homes and you're crying in your beer because you're not making as much money as you want to out of these people that are standing and will pay whatever you sell them for. <sighs> Days on the market rose to a whole 18 days versus 14 days a year ago. That is so fast. While all cash buyers accounted for 26% of sales, investor activity increased to 18%. The first time home buyers was at 27%, which has been pretty consistent within a couple of percentage for a couple of years. The index of leading indicators, leading economic indicators fell again in June, according to the conference board. The US LEI fell again in June, fueled by gloomier consumer expectations. We Weaker new orders, an increased number of initial claims for unemployment, and a reduction in housing construction. The stock market is signaling a soft landing, but the bond market is unequivocally predicting a recession. Similarly, manufacturing has been in a recession for close to a year, but services are doing fine. Lastly, hard economic data such as construction activity and car manufacturing are improving, while sentiment surveys of consumers and small businesses very weak, LEI was dismal. I personally see a mild recession coming. Bonds begin the day in weaker territory, but up until the economic AM economic data, yields were no higher than yesterday's highs. After the data, it was off to the races for sellers, but not in a straight line. Jobless claims data was the big issue as it came in much lower than expected on the NFP survey week to boot. The implication is that a higher risk of a big NFP number in two weeks. Bonds progressively traded that in, but we're, we're not exactly sure how to go about it given the state of flux for the Fed's rate hike outlook and the most recent CPI data. Looked at another way, CPI argued for a softer stance from the Fed next week, whereas today's data says, eh, not so quick there, Jerome. At the close, MBS were down 36 basis points, stocks lost 30 points, and the Treasury was up 10 basis points at 99.47. That puts us back down in this lower range, which is bordered by the 25-day moving average as a ceiling and a Fibonacci S2 retracement at 99.24, which is only about 20 basis points below current levels. We also got a post from our sponsor at Well, that makes sense.com. This is a wrap-up of a great great series we had uh they came from a podcast that chris williamson did with alex hormozy i didn't know alex before this podcast series and i got about halfway through stopped went back and started taking notes great stuff here so the key takeaways is that people live out all of the potential downsides in the key takeaways are that people will live out all of the potential downsides of decisions in the mere reflection of what people will think about them in the future. Should they fail, shame only exists in the shadows. Nobody actually sees that because you didn't do anything big enough to get any actual shame. Identify when you have hesitation to confront something and ask yourself why you're experiencing that hesitation. The difference between that and not doing anything is the difference between success and failure.